In this video, we'll take a look at how to add quizzes to our Moodle course. Now, quizzes are a great way to test your students' knowledge on topics that they are studying. And just like with almost any other module in Moodle, quizzes have a massive amount of features that we can make use of. To get started with adding a quiz, click on the gear icon and click on Turn Editing On. Click on Add an Activity or Resource and then select the quiz. In the right column, we have some information about the quiz and the different uses for quizzes. Click on the Add button to add the quiz. Setting up a quiz has two parts. The first is to set up the quiz module itself. The second is to add the questions inside the quiz. We can add in a description and choose whether we would like the description to display on the course page. If we scroll lower down, you might be overwhelmed with the amount of settings that we have for the quiz module. Let's go through them from the top. First off, we have timing. Remember that at any time, if you are not sure what a certain setting does, click on the help icon next to the name to get some information. The timing settings allow us to add a time limit for the quiz or a start date or close date for the quiz. We can also select what happens when a student runs out of time while completing the quiz. Under grade, the important setting is the pass mark, which we won't fill in right now, and we'll see why once we start adding in the questions. Attempts allowed will allow us to give our students additional attempts to complete the quiz. We can also select how the attempts will be graded. For now, we'll leave the quiz at unlimited so that students can attempt the quiz as many times as they want until they get their desired score. Under layout, we can set how we want questions in our quiz to be displayed in the quiz module. By default, one question is shown per page. If we click the drop down, we can change how many questions should appear on a page. Under question behavior, we can choose if we want answers for multiple choice questions to be shuffled so that every time a student attempts the quiz, the order will be different. With just these settings set, we can start adding the questions to our quiz. Click Save and Display to be taken to our new quiz. We'll be given a message that says that our quiz has no questions in it. To add questions to our quiz, click on Edit Quiz. To add a question, click on the Add button and we have three options. Add a new question, add a question from the question bank or add a random question. I'll explain what the question bank is in a moment. For now, let's click on Add a new question. Here are all the possible question types that we can add in our quiz. To get information on what a question does, Click on it and on the right we should be presented with some information. In this video, we'll just take a look at a few of these, starting with the multiple choice question. Select the question type and then click Add. The mandatory fields for a question is the question name, the question text, the mark of the question and of course the answers. But before we get to the question name, we have an option to select a category for our questions. This will be the category that this question will be stored in, in our question bank. So what exactly is the question bank and which option should you choose? In Moodle, every question that you make for a quiz is stored inside a question bank. Questions from the question bank can be reused in other quizzes. Inside the question bank, we have categories. The default categories are the default category for the quiz and the default category for the course. 
The category that you choose to put your question in will determine how the question can be shared. If we put our questions into the default for pop quiz category, then we will only be able to use those questions for that particular quiz. And if you put questions into the default for course-01 category, then you'll be able to use these questions for any other quiz that you create inside of this course. So if you know that the questions will not be used in other quizzes within the course, then place them into the category for the quiz. But if you feel that you might reuse questions for other quizzes in your course, then place them into the default for the course category. So let's head back to our question and I'm going to choose the default for pop quiz category. So let's start by giving our question a name and I'll just call it Q1. And for the question text, I'll just paste in some dummy text. And for the default mark, let's make this one out of three points. We can also choose if this multiple choice question can have more than one answer. We can check this box to shuffle the choices within the question. And we can also change the numbering of the question. And finally, we can start adding the actual answers. Generally, I like to use the first answer box for the correct answer. So I'll paste in my answer and I'll make sure that the correct answer is set to 100%. Next, I'll fill in the rest of the answers. Once you're done, click Save Changes at the bottom of the page. We will then be taken back to our Edit Quiz page where we can get an overview of all the questions that we've added to the quiz. Currently, we just have the one question called Q1 and we can click on this gear icon to edit the quiz. We can click on the magnifying glass to preview it or the trash can to delete it. We can also change the mark allocation from here. Let's preview this quiz to see what it looks like. Click on Close Preview to exit. Let's add in another question. This time, we'll add in a true or false. And the process is exactly the same. Under Category, we make sure that we have the default for Pop Quiz selected. And this time, we can see a number 1 inside the brackets. This indicates that there is one question inside this category. I'll call this one Q2 and I'll add some text. I'll give this question a mark allocation of 2. And we can select the correct answer. In this case, either true or false. And we can also give some feedback for each response. Once you're done, click Save Changes. And let's add in one more question. This time, we'll add in an essay type question. From the top, we make sure that our category is set. We'll give this a name. Under the question text, we'll give some instructions about what kind of essay should be written. And we'll give this a mark. For essay type questions, under the response options, we have a few additional settings. Under response format, we can choose the HTML editor or the plain text editor. The HTML editor is similar to what we see here, where students will get all of the editing options and they'll be able to format their essay. The plain text option is a more bare bones editor that won't allow much formatting. Under Require Text, we'll make sure that we set Require the student to enter text. Under Input Box Size, we can set how large the text box should be. 
and we can even allow attachments. Under Response Template, the teacher can set a template for the students to follow while writing the essay. And finally, the teacher can leave some grading information for other educators. Once you are done, click Save Changes.